very much. Respected Honorable Chief Minister Singh Ravadji, Secretary Shri Pradeep Singh Kurulaji, Chief Secretary Shri Somesh Kumarji, Joint Secretary Shrimati Usha Padiji, Fiki President Shrimati Sangita Rediji, my colleagues at Fiki, Dr. Tiagi and Shri Dilip Shinoiji, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, Namaste, good afternoon, bonjour. It is my privilege and pleasure to be speaking today at this August event dedicated to helicopters. I also thank Fiki for giving me the opportunity to present the industry keynote address. We live in an era of connectivity where innovation and fast-paced communication have truly chunk the world to a global village. The aviation industry has been a crucial catalyst in this transformation, making it possible to travel safely and fast over long distances. But today, aviation faces an unprecedented challenge in the shape of a health pandemic that has disrupted the world economy. We are in the midst of change, one in which the future is unpredictable, but not without the promise of new opportunities. And this includes the use of helicopters. As countries rethink their health and social infrastructure, reboot local tourism, and recast transportation in a post-COVID world, the use of helicopter must be boosted as an essential part of any nation's efficient economic reconstruction. It is today a well-acknowledged fact that the future of aviation growth lies in the fast-growing markets of Asia, led by rapidly expanded markets such as India. In this, the regional connectivity scheme, the UDAN scheme, and the Smart Cities project can play a pivotal role. But growth in aviation does not mean focusing only on growing the airlines or the fixed-wing sector. India is a vast country with terrains that are, at times, not reachable by fixed-wing aircraft. This is where the focus on growing and announcing the use of helicopters comes into play. I need to, to confess something personal. Being at Airbus, I like airplanes very much, obviously. But I like helicopters even more. And you know why? Because helicopter is the unique transportation mean that can reach everywhere in the world, that can operate in any harsh environment. Helicopter means freedom. Helicopter means saving lives. Helicopter means protecting people and democracy. And I used to be the chief engineer of helicopters. And I remember this time with a lot of emotions and a lot of pride. And it is an irony then that the number of helicopters flying in the country, civil and power public market, has remained largely stagnant at about 250 over the past many years. This is an abysmally low number that is not even comparable to the volume of helicopters flying in some of the major cities of the world. While the regional connectivity scheme and Udan scheme are expected to boost the use of helicopters on a hub and spoke module, there are several areas where helicopter deployment is an urgent need. A very well-known success story is the seasonal deployment of helicopter for the Chartam and Amanat Yastras. And I hope the pronunciation was not too awful, and I do apologize for my accent. There are more than 50 takeoffs that happen every day from just one helipad during the pilgrimage season, just to ferry devotees to the holy shrines. This has resulted in the creation of thousands of jobs during the pilgrimage season. But should such amenities be restricted only to such seasons and purposes? Well, no, given, given the vast distances and diverse topography of India, there is latent appetite for on-demand mobility, not only in the urban areas, but also in many parts of our mountain states. If the proof of the pudding is in the eating, then look no further than our bustling cities, such as Bangalore or Mumbai, where cutting-edge companies such as Flyblade or Thumbi Aviation have begun the journey of transforming on-demand urban air mobility. Across the country, we have 150,000 fatalities a year on our roads, which means about 400 a day. EMS, Emergency Medical Services, has not taken off yet. The beauty of the helicopter is to save time by being able to reach fast any point on the surface of the planet. And we all know that time is money. It can also save lives. What is required 
is an interministerial policy push covering aviation, health, highways, insurance, local authorities, police, to come up with a comprehensive policy and regulations to kickstart the EMS sector. For example, policy support is required for easing of restrictions on airspace use, as well as helipads infrastructure and landing charges. The inclusion of EMS as an essential element of a holistic national health and medical policy should be considered. Internal security is another major field of opportunity for helicopters. We must boost the use of helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles for the purpose of effective internal surveillance, maintenance of law and order, and traffic, firefighting, and civic management as part of our smart cities project. So what are the challenges to host? First, high cost of operations. That includes customs duty on spares, which stands at 28%. Bringing aviation turbine fuel under the GST regime can also help rationalize cost. Second, non-flexible air traffic rules and regulations for EMS, such as disparate radio frequency communication between helicopter pilots and on-ground police and ambulance service or hospital. Third, the lack of infrastructure, such as having enough helipads in key locations has timid growth. Planning of helicopter pilots must be incentivized, an MRO ecosystem developed, and the creation of heli corridors must be expedited. The government has now permitted 100% foreign direct investment under the automatic route for helicopter and seaplane service, which should act as a catalyst of the rotorcraft market goals. The government has an ambition of reaching a $5 trillion economy. We must recognize the contribution that helicopters can make to speed of doing business to reach that target. Finally, all this needs to be done keeping the environment and safety in mind, which means incentivizing the use of modern technology to deploy state-of-the-art equipment phasing out obsolete equipment like replacing aging helicopters with light and fuel efficient ones that optimize fuel consumption and curb emissions. We have achieved altogether a flying start in aviation. Accelerating sustainable goals will require opening the skies further through a policy framework that could make us a world leader in both fixed wing and rotorcraft aviation markets. On on behalf of FIKI, I welcome all the dignitaries, speakers, and delegates to the summit. And I wish you all a very successful summit. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you, Remy, for that uh, excellent uh, address. And great to know that you were a helicopter engineer before you took on your